In Hawaii, I had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with different people at different times, with different levels of learning and experience. One had this One man experience in his training to become what we call a kahuna. Now here is a gentleman that went through a number of years of non-verbal so training. that they would be able to learn to be conversant with trees and talk to trees, talk to plants, talk to rocks, talk to animals, okay, to where they are perfectly in one with nature. Now, are you ready? After three years of nonverbal training, there were three people training to become a kahuna. Two men, one woman. And after three years, they came to the time when there was a test of poison. All right? The female kahuna trainee was offered a half a coconut shell full of deadly poison. And she drank it, overcame the effects of the poison, and was fine. Didn't phase her. The second person in line, there's a female kahuna here. The kahuna was here. The female was here. She drank her cup. No problem. The one in the middle was a male kahuna trainee. He drank his cup of poison and dropped dead on the spot. Okay. The third one was my teacher. And he took his cup of poison as his friend dropped dead. And he looked at his friend and felt sorry for his friend that had dropped dead after taking the cup of poison. This is what you call sympathy. And when his heart went out in sympathy, where he felt sorry for his friend, the effect of the poison began to penetrate his being and he had to act very quickly. And he had to very quickly switch from sympathy to empathy. Empathy is understanding that the other person had free will. They didn't exercise it properly. They died. So he very quickly had to shift around to where he felt the poison now, 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 now with non-resistance, listen to my words. And Doug has a story to tell you then. Hey, you better get it right. Now, l listen to me on this. He had to experience it in the ever-present now. Now, now. He felt the poison come into his body. He recreated the poison going into his body. He held his body erect, powerfully strong, Assume the virtue, feeling the poison now, penetrating his very body, re-experiencing it, re-experiencing it, re-experiencing it, re-experiencing it, until there was nothing left to re-experience, and he overcame the cup of poison. If you feel sorry for somebody, you're denying the God within them, and you take upon yourself the energy of that person, that who's sick and dying. If you have an understanding heart and you love that person as an eternal soul, knowing that they are manifesting outwardly what they have inwardly manifested, and that so without, so within. And so if you take a position where you feel sorry for a person who's a cripple, you add to the creation of that crippled condition. But when you can see a person as perfect divine order, and there are no mistakes, when they apply the laws to their body and to their mind, they become gradually totally clear and well of that condition that has besieged them perhaps for many years. And that problem that they have had then becomes their greatest teacher. Now, after this one guy dropped dead, the kahuna walked away, the other two followed him. 
And about three and a half to four days later, he came back, cradled the dead person in their arm, was like a stuffed toad by that time, you know. He cradled him in, blew the breath of life into him, and he came back to life. But he was told at that time that he did not have the ability to ever become a kahuna, but he could come along with the rest of them since they'd been together and complete their training, which would be about another seven, eight years. I, I hope you're hearing me. Well, after a little while, he got tired of that, and he quit, and he went to another kahuna to get training from him to become a kahuna. And at that time, he went through the test again, failed it, and died. Okay? That's what happened to him. Uh, this is not kid stuff we're talking about here.